Hello everyone, it's Monica from EDAC. V-Ray 7 is finally here and today I will show you how to set up the render settings. Getting this right is crucial for creating realistic visualizations. Let's dive in. Before we start with render settings, it's important to get the basics right. Without proper lighting and detailed materials, even the best render settings will not help. Focus on adding a variety of light sources, as well as reflections and BAM maps to your materials. Once the lighting and materials are set correctly, good render settings will take your results to the next level. You can find the render settings under the gear icon. One of the most important settings is choosing the rendering engine. Depending on your computer, you can render faster using either the CPU or GPU. The CPU is your computer's processor, while the GPU is the graphics card. Since I use an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti, I always choose the GPU because my graphics card is more powerful than my CPU. In V-Ray 7, render settings are simplified. There is no CUDA or RTX option. However, when you select GPU, the V-Ray GPU tab appears on the right-hand side of the settings. Here you can choose between CUDA and RTX. If you have an RTX graphics card, select RTX. If you have a different type of graphics card, choose CUDA. I select RTX graphics card. If you are unsure which to choose, the best option is to compare rendering times. Start by rendering with the CPU, then render again GPU CUDA, and finally with GPU RTX. Compare the results in the History tab. For me, RTX is the fastest, so that's the option I go with. It's important to know that there are three rendering modes to choose from. The first is Interactive Rendering Mode. It shows changes to the scene in real time. In V-Ray 7, interactive rendering mode isn't visible at the first sight. To access it, click the small triangle next to the teapot icon and switch to interactive mode. This mode is useful for simple scenes when you need to quickly check apply changes. However, for complex scenes, it tends to be slower, lower in quality and produces more noise. The second is progressive rendering mode. I use this mode for fast render previews. It's not real-time, but it generates the render quickly. The third is bucket rendering mode. To enable this, simply turn off progressive rendering. I use bucket mode for final renders. It takes more time to complete, but the results are of the highest quality and best use for final visualizations. Let's sum it up. Interactive rendering mode, fast, real-time preview. Progressive rendering mode, quick results, great for previews. Bucket rendering mode, best for final renders, but slower. Next is the render quality. You can set it from low to high plus, depending on the purpose. For preview renders, I set it to low plus or medium. For final renders, I choose medium plus or high. I avoid using high plus because it significantly slows down the render and the difference between high and high plus is not visible, especially with the denoiser turned on. Are you happy with this video? This scene I've been working on is part of my brand new V-Ray for SketchUp visualization course coming soon. Make sure to sign up for the list and you will be the first to know when it's ready. Check the description below the video or click at the upper right corner. Next is the denoiser. The denoiser reduces noise in the visualization. In V-Ray 7, there is a new Auto option. If you select Auto, you don't need to adjust anything. The denoiser will automatically adapt based on the rendering mode. In previous versions of V-Ray, I used to set the denoiser to V-Ray because it gave me the best results. Now, I simply set it to Auto. Let's focus on the camera tab. The most important option here is exposure value. This setting allows you to brighten or darken the scene. A higher exposure value makes the scene darker, while a lower value makes it brighter. 
The exposure value in the camera tab is linked to the advanced camera parameters tab on the right. I prefer adjusting the advanced camera parameters because when they are set correctly, the lighting in the scene looks much better. To keep it simple, film sensitivity, ISO, adjusts brightness. Higher value, brighter image. Lower value, darker image. Aperture, F number, controls how much light enters the camera. Low F number, more light enters. High F number, less light enters. Shutter speed controls light intake. Fast, less light. Slow, more light. If it seems a bit complicated, I will show you how I set these values. I set film sensitivity to 125. Shutter speed to 125. And aperture F number to 8. If I want to brighten the scene, I lower the aperture to 6 or 4. If I want to darken it, I increase the aperture to higher values. And that's it. Now let's compare a scene with the default settings and my custom settings in the advanced camera parameters. With my settings, the scene is brighter. Let's move on to the render output tab. Turning on the save frame option shows the render output area in SketchUp. This should always be enabled because it lets you see what will be visible in the final render. The darker areas indicate parts that will not appear in the visualization. Let's adjust the image width height. This controls the resolution of the render. For preview renders, I set it around 800-1000 pixels. For final renders, I choose 2000 pixels or higher. Next is aspect ratio. Choose a ratio that fits your scene. You can use presets, match the viewport, or set a custom aspect ratio manually. If you want to save renders automatically, turn on the Save Image option. Select the folder where you want to save the render automatically. Choose the file type. I usually select JPEG. Check the single file option to save only the final render without additional channels that aren't necessary. Resumable rendering in V-Ray for SketchUp allows you to pause or resume a render without starting over. Here's how it works. Simply. If you stop a render, V-Ray saves your progress. Later, you can continue without starting over, saving time. Let's talk about the Global Illumination tab. If you are using CPU, you can set the primary light to either brute force or irradiance map. Brute force is more accurate, and I often use this option. Irradiance map is faster but less accurate. In V-Ray 7, this option is deprecated, meaning it may be removed or no longer developed in future versions. I recommend sticking with brute force. If you are using GPU, you can change the primary rays. It's set by default. For secondary rays, I recommend leaving the settings as they are for both CPU and GPU. Last but not least, let me show you my settings for preview and final renders. For preview renders, I turn on progressive rendering mode. I set the quality to low plus or medium. I set the resolution to 800 or 1000 pixels. For final renders, I switch to bucket rendering mode. I set the quality to medium plus or high. I set the resolution to around 2000 pixels or higher. What are your render settings? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. Check out my website edag.org. You will find there many free content, very for SketchUp course and articles. See you there. Bye.